Meet my newest friend, Calvin. Calvin, can you just tell some of our friends a little bit about you? Yeah, a uh, personal trainer from California. Just moved out to Colorado and was introduced to the answer. Um, I haven't used it or anything yet, but uh, we figured today we would do an introductory video, check it out, get a feel for it, and uh, see what it's all about. Perfect. So one of the things that I really like to do is capture authenticity mm. and transparency okay. because I think the world is ready for a lot of that. Agreed. And I think that um, the more authentic and the more transparent I can be and others can be, the more freedom that we have mentally, physically, spiritually, and emotionally to express ourselves. Well put. And so what I'm doing is capturing videos. You're the first personal trainer that I've captured a video with oh, utilizing the answer All right. who's never used it before. All right. And so I'm pumped up about this because you have so much experience. Can you tell my friends a little bit about your experience? Yeah, so I've uh, been working out since I was 11 years old. <clears throat> Both of my parents were uh, amateur bodybuilders. <clears throat> Excuse me. Uh, got into martial arts when I was like four uh, and was competitive in that all the way up until I started wrestling uh, and weightlifting at 11. And then once I became a professional you know, fitness advocate, I worked at uh, Google, I worked at the new Apple campus in California, uh, you know, a bunch of fun places. And uh, yeah, just had the opportunity to work with a lot of different people in a lot of different uh, you know, spaces, whether it be powerlifting, martial arts, and uh, now my journey has led me to Colorado. Perfect, I'm just gonna yeah. give you guys a little plug for my man Calvin. If you're looking for personal training, come on in, he's just starting here at Just Results. We wanna build his business and we want him to be able to share the wealth of health yeah. with you, your friends, your family. So without further ado, let's just get into the workout. And have you ever done one answer? I have not. So let us explain it to you real quick. It is the sit up for the squat, knees over our ankles, Get the full sit up, and then when we come forward, drive through the heels, gauge the quads and glutes on the way up. Inhaling down, exhaling up. And we're gonna start out with 10 of those. Okay. And then, I just also wanna say, I did my first training session with Calvin yesterday, it was awesome. Super articulate, super knowledgeable, super kind, friendly, and encouraging. And so right here, right now, we're just gonna get started. So inhale down, straight down. And then get that sit up thing. And then exhale, stand up for greatness. Drive through the heels. Good. We're just going to do nine more of those. Right. Inhaling down, exhaling up. And one of the things I really loved about when you trained me yesterday was you treated me as though I had never known anything about exercise, which I loved because right. you covered all the bases. You gave me some cool stuff on bench press, you gave me some cool bench press tips, you gave me some cool lunch tips that I had never even thought of. And I've been doing this for so many years. Right, right, so many hours. And, like I didn't even know you started when you were eleven. I started when I was ten. I was so, like, yeah, yeah, it's, it's wow. cool. We have a lot of that in common. And so right here, right now, I want to extend the same courtesy. But I just I love that you're, you're keeping your knees over your ankles. I love how you're giving that full range of motion on your sit-ups, lengthening through the spine, engaging the abs all the way up, driving through the heels. Good. And then focusing on the breath, inhaling down, and then exhaling up. Beautiful. And then the next time that you take a seat on your answer, I just want you to move into some sit-ups. So the principle of active rest. We just worked your quads, we just worked your glutes, we got the heart rate going. So now we're gonna shift into some core and let your heart rate come down a little bit, give your quads and your glutes a little bit of rest. Yes, the answer did have some core involved in it. However, I integrated a ton of yoga principles into the answer workout routine. So the vinyasa, the idea of moving from one movement into the next in a beautiful sequence, that makes sense. Right. And so one of the things that I really, really love about the answer workout is in this small footprint, we will be able to do all of the things that you took me through yesterday. So we did, we did squats yesterday, we did lunges yesterday, we did bench press yesterday, we did some pulls yesterday, we did some sit-ups yesterday. And so right here, right now, we're able to do all of those same things. And then just encouraging you to continue to focus on your breath. The isolation of the abs is awesome because that lower back yeah. is supported. Good, very much. Stay where you're at. Yep. Take your feet out, slide your body forward. And then grab your weights. All right. And scoot forward just a little bit more. So when you lean back, you can support your head, your neck, your shoulders. Gotcha. And grab your weights. Moving into a bench press. And then one of the things I just want to encourage you to do is lift your hips higher. So now we have the posterior chain engaged. Nice. And then just like he was telling me yesterday, to flare out my lats while I do my bench press, and then pushing up and together. And so you can see his lats flared out here. And that was just such a great tip that I've never even heard of. And then you can probably lift your hips even a little higher, yeah. So now you're getting your time, your most valuable asset, you're maximizing because your core's engaged right here. You got a reverse plank going. Your glutes 
glutes are engaged right here because you're lifting your hips up, and your pectorals are engaged. So the traditional way of bench press is currently done with dumbbells is on a flat bench, which right. is a great way of doing it, and you can isolate your pectoral muscles. Now we're getting the benefit of the lower back, the glutes, and the core. And I just want to let you know, if you felt his glutes right now, they're engaged. Yeah. <laughs> I love yeah. it. He was so complimentary of my form and encouraging me on all those stuff. And words of encouragement go so far. And I'm just grateful for that. Thank you. Good. Very much. Set your hips down. Set your waist down. Slide your beautiful body back. And we're just going to move into some answers. And then this time, we're going to add a little complex movement to the bicep curls. So grab the weights. Inhale. Back through your legs. Exhale. Forward. Driving through your heels. All the way to standing. Get the curl at the top. Oh, gotcha. Yeah. Shine in your heart. Forward. Inhale down. Get that full squat. Get that full sit up. I love it. So when we were doing our squats yesterday, I was working my quads and my glutes. And then you took me over to do some other exercises. Right. And so right here, right now, you're doing what you took me over to do all in one motion. So you're getting your perfect form squat. You're getting your sit ups, which you had me do yesterday. And we're getting some curls as well. And so time's your most valuable asset. Do you agree? Absolutely. And so what we're doing right now is efficiently. Man, he's huge. I love it. <laughs> I love it. I love it. I've been watching my man on Instagram for about six weeks. Yeah. And uh, just pumped up for his arrival in the physical plane. And I mean, this man is meticulous and dedicated with his avatar. His beautiful body, investing in the wealth of his health, and I love it. I'm inspired by it. And I'm just grateful to be here and be now sharing this what I've been working on with you because we're gonna get a real feedback from him at the end of this workout. We're gonna do about 40 minutes of the answer workout, and then we're gonna give you some time to express your real, genuine, authentic, transparent review of the product. Beautiful. The next time that you take a seat on the answer, let's just move back into some sit-ups. Inhale back, create length. Exhale forward, create strength. And we're gonna do a little bit of an eclectic mix of today's workout. So I want you to see a wide array of what we can do with the workout. And I love the breathing, I love the range of motion. I love the focus on the form and on the quality. I love the neurological connection that you're firing with your brain to your abs to engage your abs. And one of the things that's super important to me and understanding is that the brain is a sending and receiving transmitter. And it communicates to every part of our body through our nervous system. And our nerves run through our spine, and then they run out. So by strengthening our core, we support our spine. And when we support our spine, we support our brain's ability to communicate with the billions of cells that create our physical body. That's really interesting. And one of the things I really notice and admire about what you're doing is you're consciously thinking about each movement and you're consciously using your brain to send a message to those muscles yep. to do what you want them to do. And we're just empowering that ability right here, right now. Yes, I love it. Inhale back. Exhaling forward. Good. Very mind, you take your feet out, slide your beautiful body forward again. And instead of going into a regular bench press, we're going to go into an incline bench press. So just stay where you're at. Inhale into those shoulders. Exhale up. Press them together. Oh, that's really good. Cool. Yeah. That's really good support. Boom! Yes! I love it, capturing it live, real time. And so what we're doing right here right now is working the upper pectoral muscles. And so when we change the angle, we change the way that we're engaging the muscles. I live in a 360 degree plane. I believe you live in a 360 degree yep. plane. <laughs> so one of the things that I'm really passionate about is empowering the body in 360 degrees of movement. And what he took me through yesterday, we hit a variety of movement. We did side lunges, we did forward lunges, we did a lot of mobility with our hip, and I just was really grateful for how Calvin took me through all of these movements that were hitting all the different directions that each one of my joints move in. And I'm super grateful for the way that he trained me, and I'm super grateful to be able to demonstrate today through all these wide array of exercises 
all the different movements we can get right here, right now. And I love it, dude. I love your breath. I love it. That's the most valuable thing that any of us possess. I don't know. The oxygen. The oxygen. And the way that you're breathing, you're creating a void in your lungs with that powerful exhale, which the universe abhors a vacuum. So when you create that vacuum, fresh oxygen is rushing into your body. And I love it. Good. Everybody, if you set your waist down, slide that beautiful body back. And we're just going to change the kind of answer we did. Last time we did suffocation curls. Uh -huh. This time let's do some hammer curls, all right? And while you're doing your answer hammer curls, can you just articulate to our friends what the hammer curl does to the head of the bicep versus yeah. the supination curl? <clears throat> so uh, when you do a supinated curl, meaning bringing your pinky up, it really works the inner head of the bicep. Uh, one of the jobs of the bicep as a whole is to supinate the forearm, right? Bring your hands or your pinkies up like you're holding the whole suit. <coughs> Excuse me. When you do a uh, hammer grip curl, you're actually working your brachialis, that's this guy, and your brachial radialis, that's our brachial radialis, and your brachialis, which is on the outside of the bicep, <coughs> in between the outer head and your upper arm. So it really thickens the arm as a whole. It also helps with the bicep peak and forearm thickness. Okay. Nice. Love it. Cool. Delivering some amazing content to our friends. And that was one of the coolest things when I worked with you yesterday. The wisdom bombs you were dropping on me <laughs> and the knowledge of all the muscles, the ligaments, the tendons, the joints, the angles, the engagement. Dude, I just love, 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 love it. Love it. And uh, I just was grateful for you sharing that with me and the added value as you're helping me invest in the wealth of health. Inhaling down, exhaling up. So, another thing I want to capture right here, right now, good, moving into your sit up again, is that you just dropped a bunch of knowledge bombs. <laughs> yep, just sit up right there on me and on our friends. And so, while our friends are at home, what the whole wealth of health and the answer allow is you can do what my man Calvin's doing in real time. Yeah, <laughs> and you can give them knowledge and wisdom and excitement. One of the things I was talking to you about yesterday is I'm pumped up because you can maintain contact with your clients back in California. Right? We can road trip out there, we can take them a bunch of answers, yep. and then you can interact with them and keep that relationship, keep that fabric that you built, keep that reputation that you built, and just delivering content. Good, I love it, I love it. How was that go? Really good, really good. Yeah? Yeah, I love the really opening up the thoracic cavity here, right? Thoracic cavity, yes! You can feel it, you're supported, but you're still able to open up, and then you squeeze, you're engaging all those muscle fibers. Boom! Oh! Yes. I love the mindful tempo, dude. I love the breathing, I love the squeezing of the abs, it's beautiful. It's so good. Good, then we're going to very mindfully take your feet out, slide that beautiful body forward, support your head, your neck, your shoulders, and we're going to go into a pectoral fly. Yep. Bring yeah. hips up again. Yep, hips up again. Get those glutes going. Get the glutes going. <laughs> All right. <laughs> Inhale and down. Exhale and up into that pectoral fly. And I just love the way he's breathing and just taking that to the bank. And then just look at the mindful connection that he's doing. You can see that his brain is sending a message to his pectoral muscles right here at the top. He's pausing and he's contracting intentionally, sending that communication from the brain to his pectoral muscles. Now watch this. He's going to send a communication from his brain to his glutes to lift higher and squeeze higher. Oh yeah! Look at the brain's ability to communicate with the billions of cells that create the physical body. And just look at this. And so I just want to ask you a question also yeah. about weight selection. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Uh, you know, you are a professional at the body. Right. And can you tell us to get the mass and the volume and the size that you have about weight selection? Yeah, so there's two different ways of looking at it. You can think about the, uh, we call it hypertrophy, right? So muscle growth. You can think about the, what's called sarcoplasmic hypertrophy which is just a fancy word for uh, storing more energy in the muscle fiber and thus making it a bit fatter, a bit pumped up. Uh, you can call it a pump if you want. And then you can think about myofibrillar. Good, take a seat, scoot your beautiful body back. We're gonna move into a set of answers with some front raises this time. All right. 
So the two kinds of uh, hypertrophy, real straightforward. You can either tear the muscle down oh, and build new fiber, like that. Mm -hmm. Exactly like that. Beauty. Or you can increase the volume of energy stored in the little tube around the muscle fiber itself. Uh, both have their merits. And you'll hear people argue for both. You'll hear people say, oh, you want big muscles, you gotta work heavy. You'll hear other people say, you gotta get a pump. You need to eat carbs and do high reps. And they're both right. Those are two different pathways that we build muscle. So I would say, you know, split it quite evenly between gaining strength and gaining, uh, you know, uh, work load endurance. So high reps. Nice, I love it. Thank you for that tip. That's something that I'm asked frequently. And um, again, I just want to point out how knowledgeable my man is at the body and the anatomy and how incredible that is. Because with the answer, all of the workouts are done with relatively light weights because they're time sensitive routines. You're doing something for 20 seconds, right. 30 seconds, or a minute. And what I've noticed is a lot of my clients have made huge strength gains from their squats, their deadlifts, and their bench press outside of here. Okay, yeah. Good. Next time you take a seat, get your weights, move it into some crossover sit-ups. I'm just grateful to have the science behind what I'm watching and experiencing. Because, you know, your knowledge of the body and the physics of fitness is so incredible and I'm so inspired by it. So it's yours, man. It's, it's deep. And so the spine moves in six directions, forward, backward, side to side, and it rotates on its axis. Interesting. Yep. So right here, right now, we're working our obliques. And as we support our spine, we want to honor the third law of physics. For every action, there's an equal and opposite reaction. So again, coming back to that 360 degree plane that we live in, right here, right now, we're hitting the obliques, as well as the forward and back movement. Yeah! My man, yeah, yeah. That's so good. So tell me some stuff about oblique training, if you'd be so kind. Oblique training is awesome, man. I mean, it really provides the frame, you know, this frame out here around your abs. Mm -hmm. And it's a, uh, you know, even if you don't have the strongest uh, rectus femoris, you know, I'm sorry, yeah, uh, rectus abdominis, you don't have the craziest looking six pack. If you get that nice frame, it looks good on the beach. Mm -hmm. So you do want to work the lateral movements, and like you said, all six. Degrees of uh, you know motion. <clears throat> Last one. Good. We're going to take your feet outside that beautiful body forward, and we're going to move into an incline alternating bench press. One arm and then the other. And so, what I want to capture with you, my friend, is the variety of what we're doing. Yeah. And we could have just gone into another incline bench press. What I want to just point out is. Variety is the spice of life, yeah. often said. And so some of the things with the thousands of training sessions that I've done that have really helped me have success with my clients is keeping their mind stimulated. And every time you do a new movement, you create a new neural pathway in your brain. Okay. And so if you've done this before, then you're just further ingraining a neural pathway you already have. And if this is the first time you've ever done it, you're creating a whole new thought pattern. And you are personally creating a whole new thought pattern right here right now because you've never been at this angle right. while doing this exercise, no. even if you've done this exercise. So utilizing the answer today, you've created so many new neural pathways because it's a totally new movement that you've never done before. And so we're talking about the expansion of the human mind. Yeah. The mind is a muscle as well. We can work it with the hypertrophy that you're talking about and all of these different principles. I love it. I love being you, my man! Yes! Good, very much. We set that weight down, slide that incredible body back. And we're going to move into some answers with some side raises. Ooh, love it, love it. Yeah. And uh, so I gave my man Calvin here some 20 pound dumbbells. Uh, you know, I just figured based on his magnitude, that would be an appropriate amount of weight. And uh, how's it feeling so far? Feels good. The front raises were heavy for me. Okay. Uh, lateral raises, these are, this is usually the weight I use. Okay. I tend to go lighter on shoulders. Yeah, uh, yeah. Because for some reason, I really don't need heavy weight to feel shoulders. Okay, perfect. Uh, and this is perfect. I love it, dude. And so a lot of times, we think that in order to get a physique like this, we need to be using like 50 pound weights, 100 pound weights, 
racking up. And uh, dude, I love it. And a lot of what you're doing is very mindful and controlled. That's right. I love it. All about that squeeze. Woo! Being present in the muscle. Being present in the muscle. I love it. So good. Look at that body. So how are the quads feeling so far? They feel great. Nice. Definitely engaged. Everything's engaged though, so it's hard to get a pinpoint. Nice. Great breath. Last one here. Inhale and down. Exhale and up. And the next time that you take a seat on your answer, we're just going to move into another set of crossover sit-ups. And I just really want to point out, if you notice, the integrity of everything that Calvin's doing is all in alignment. And your angles are brilliant. And your mindfulness and your dedication are brilliant. And I love the rotation through the spine. I love your breath to movement right here, right now. And one of the things that I think is super important with the training is honoring the third law of physics for every action there's an equal and opposite reaction. So making sure that we train the body to be in balance, to have symmetry. And so if our spine is our column where all of our nerves run through, we want the abs to be as strong as the lower back. We want both sides of the obliques to be just as strong so our spine can remain centered. Well, it's certain to do it. <laughs> yeah, yeah, dude, I love it. So, uh, with the answer, a lot of the value is in the workout videos that I'm putting together, and I'm excited to get other professionals like yourself to help me create fresh, original content. And just to have people be able to relate, people can relate with you based on your experience, your journey, your story, your avatar, your, your goals. Good, very much. Take your feet out, slide your beautiful body forward, support your head, your neck, your shoulders. And we're going to move into a skull pressure. Nice. Yeah. Get those triceps. And you want to be here for more hamburger? So bring your feet back, lift your hips up. And I want you to do both, and I want you to talk to our friends about the value of both. Cool, yeah. So um, whenever I'm hitting hammer grip skull pressures, I feel it in the outside of my tricep a little bit more. Yeah, what we call the outer horseshoe. You can see a little horseshoe shape there. So it kind of works the more visually uh, apparent part of the muscle. Uh, that's not to say it doesn't work all three heads of the tricep, right? Because you have tricep means three heads. Uh, so you, you do get activation of all three, but it definitely works that outer head of the horseshoe the most. Okay. So we're going to tighten my boots here, keep them up. Oh, nice. <laughs> so these work that outer horseshoe. Yeah. Now talk to us about doing them like this. Three you know, so personally, when I do more of a I guess you could call it, it's kind of a superhuman grip, but I don't know actually what you call it. Palms down grip, technically. Um, it feels like it works the longer head, which is that head that goes all the way down to the tricep and to the elbow a little bit more. Yeah. Which accounts for a lot of the overall thickness of the arm running from your shoulder down to your elbow. So do you do a variety and eclectic mix when you're training? I do, I do, but you know, I don't I haven't used the answer before. So I haven't actually experienced it with my glute activation with my core activation, like this, you know, hitting all, you know, killing all those birds with one stone. Yeah, absolutely. And I love just his mindfulness to be aware that his glutes were starting to come down because he was so engaged with his triceps, and he was so present with his triceps, and he was talking in such great view about his triceps. Good, such a way sounds like your body back. We're going to move into an answer with the shoulder press. Nice. That his focus was there and where attention goes, energy flows. Oh, that's a really good saying. And I believe that's a Tony Robbins saying. I yeah. really love my Tony Robbins. Yeah. And, uh, oh, look at the mammoth! Oh, it's so good! It's so good! I love it. And, uh, so what he was demonstrating there, he's so focused on his triceps, his glutes began to sink. Right. So this is where we can multitask the brain muscle. The brain has infinite possibilities. And to be able to focus on engaging the entire body the whole time and run back and forth doing point checks on all of like our apparatus and checking in with it. Oh yeah. So this right here is the most explosive movement on planet Earth based on physics. Oh yeah! Because if you have potential energy up here, you're converting it into kinetic energy, you're down at ground zero, and then you're driving through. So I did a mathematic equation once, huh. and 49 repetitions of what you're doing huh. is the equivalent of power cleaning 225 pounds 10 times. Woo. 
And so you can use 20 pound dumbbells right. 49 times right. doing this, or you could put 225 pounds on a power clean bar. Ooh, so we'll do it 10 times. Right. Last two, last two. I love it, I love it. Yeah, and this is my man's, like, he just moved to the altitude two weeks ago. <laughs> His cardio is on point. He's incredible. He's amazing. He's beautiful. He's strong. His altitude is great. Good. Very Very nice for you. Take the seat on your answer. And then moving into our final set of crossover sit ups. Inhale across, back, exhale across. Inhale back, exhale across. This is so much fun. I'm just so grateful for his. And I just want to like express gratitude also for his vulnerability. My man has never trained with me. In his very first training session with me, he allowed me to videotape it, which is so kind. And he's a fitness expert. And to have the humility to let another fitness expert work with him is so incredible, so kind. And it just captures your level of confidence. Thank you. To be able to do that. I love it! It's so good. It's so incredible. It's so powerful. Yeah, my oh man, this is amazing. This is so good. And uh, so I'm excited also like to get his feedback at the end of this experience. And uh, oh, it's so good. We got three more each side, champ. Inhaling, all that's good. Exhaling everything else. Inhale, all that's good. Exhale everything else. We got one more each side. Inhale, all that's good. Exhale everything else. Last one, best one. Good. Very much. We're going to take our feet out. We're going to move into our final set of skull crushers. We're just going to do incline skull crushers. All right. And just sticking with the theme of neuroconnectivity, let's just do one arm and then the other. And then isolating each one independently. Oh, I like this. The cool thing about this is we're now building balance and symmetry because when this one goes down, it creates a moment and a torque across your body, right? Right. Yeah. So your core and your stabilization have to adjust and adapt to keep centered. And then he can focus on the intimacy of his right tricep while his left arm stabilizes. Then he can focus on the intimacy of his left tricep while his right shoulder stabilizes. And notice the engagement. He's flexing his tricep at the top while he's just holding it there. So you can do a plank to get the benefit of that movement, and all you're doing is holding the muscles engaged. What my man's doing right now is a tricep plank. This is hard and engaged, and I love it. And I never even thought about that until observing him. And I've worked with thousands and thousands and thousands of people. The people that I've worked with the least are the bodybuilders like yourself, right? because you are so focused on your program, <laughs> and you know exactly what you're doing, and so, that's not my specialty. And to watch you right now with your specialty, engaging, I'm just watching the intimacy you're having with each repetition. Each repetition is the most important one. That's right. And he's doing it. Why is it the most important one? Because it's the only one you're doing. That's right. And you're present, and I love it. Good. One more each side just to balance it out. Oh, yeah. Look at that engagement. Just holding it there, flexing it. Good. Very much. Please set your hips down, slide that beautiful body back. Do you need a water or anything? Uh. I don't think so. Right, perfect. <laughs> so we're gonna move into some answers with some upright rows this time. Interesting, all right. Yeah. I mean, the combinations are infinite. Every time you stand up. So one of these guys here? Yeah. Oh yeah, look at that! Meticulous form. Oh yeah, it's so good. And so one of the things you uh, complimented me on yesterday was how my form was so already good yeah. at what we were doing. So one of the things I just want to point out here, you've never done an answer before today, correct? Correct. Right. What was your learning curve with this? I mean, the thing is that it, it kind of forces you into proper uh, form with so many of these movements, which is why I can see it with so many times. Oh yeah, oh yeah, look at this guy! I mean, I, I just have, I've been appreciating his physique on the Instagram from afar, whether it's with his muscle car, whether it's while he's doing a forced threat, whether it's just him out and about, helping a friend out with a logo shoe, whatever the case may be, man. I just want to applaud. I'm a big fan. I'm a big fan of yours. Yeah, man. So good. Last one. Inhale down. Get that beautiful upright row when you stand up. And the next time that you take a seat on your answer, very mindfully leave your weights further back. 
And then take your feet outside your body forward, support your head and neck and your shoulders. Let's move into some pelvic thrusts. Awesome. Engaging the glutes. Get the posterior chain. Allow the heart rate to come down. Oh yeah! Squeeze those babies! And again, I just want to point out right here, he is pausing at the top for an extended period of time. Why are you doing that? Because it uh, helps to really squeeze those glutes, really engage all three of the major glute muscles. You got your glute maximus, your glute minimus, and your glute medius, I believe. And, uh, you know, if you engage all three, your ventral glutes going on on the outside, helps you not get a sausage boot. <laughs> a well-developed, but very, uh, you know, linear glute. <laughs> I love it. Balance, symmetry, so good. And just the mindfulness and the connection. And another thing I want to just point out, how tall are you, my man? 6'3"? Yeah. 6'3". My man 6'3", he's on the answer, and... Works fine, yeah. Because the answer is you! That's right. You're the answer! <laughs> <laughs> that is just an apparatus that allows you and your beautiful, divine, incredible, powerful body to execute the movements that your body is designed to do. All the machines that are used in exercise don't account for your unique body. Good, set your hips down, grab your weights. Stay where you're at, lift your hips back up, and let's move into a pullover, hit the lats. Nice. Reach your back on the inhale, and exhale, pull it over. Oh, look at him finish his lats! Oh my gosh. So incredible. Love the micro breathing, love the extension, love the pulling over. Perhaps we can squeeze our glutes up a little higher. Oh yeah! Oh yeah! Just incorporating everything. Oh, I love it, Calvin. Oh, that's a good one. So you feel that stabilization on the yes, patient as well? Oh, he said it's a good one! Yes! We'll be doing answers all over the world! Get ready, world! Get ready! Yeah, yeah. If you haven't found the answer yet, you will! <laughs> it's right here, it's within you, it's within me, it's within my man Calvin. Let's just do one more of those. Cool. And another thing here is his form is so incredible. Instead of doing 20 repetitions, you gotta set the hips down, set the weights down. He's doing 10 and getting more than the equivalent. Okay. After 20 and off. That is great because not a lot of gyms have a good uh, pull over machine anymore. So that right there is invaluable. Yeah. yeah, yeah! If all you wanted was to get those, yeah. get this. Eat wings. Uh -huh. <laughs> yeah. So we're going to very mindfully slide our body back. We're going to move into another set of answers. Okay. And then we're just going to uh, do some medicine ball throws. I got the medicine ball over here. So incorporating some plyometric movements. So you're gonna have it down, okay. throw it back to me on your way up. From, yeah, you can do that. Boom. And then you want to stand up? Yeah, exactly. Why don't you put some sauce on it when you slow it up? So you did wrestling, right? I did. <laughs> so right here, imagine the value of this for your wrestling. That's right. Getting up, Turkish get-ups are a real popular exercise. That's right. This is like a Turkish get-up for symmetry. Yep. And when you get up, you can do more at the top. Yep. Than just holding that weight. Oh my gosh, man. And can you imagine the amount of machines the average wrestling coach would have to get the school to approve in a budget? Yeah. To do what you could do with a couple of these? Oh, I mean, absolutely. It's amazing. One leg press is 10 answers. Right, right. And that's one machine that the team would have to wait to cycle it through. Oh my gosh. Yeah, yeah my man sees it! Love it. One more. I love it, man. Good, very mindful. Let's keep you where you're at. Move back into some hip thrusts. Take a seat. Pull your feet out. Slide that beautiful body forward. Pull your head, neck, shoulders. Move into the hip thrust. And so, one of the things I just want to point out is the intelligence behind the design of the workout. Interesting. And so, you're moving from one exercise into another. Right. So instead of going from your answer ball throws right into your bench press, mm -hmm. we broke it up with a sit -up. Or even more so, instead of going from your answer ball throws into a tricep extension on the pulley machine, which is over there, we're just doing it right here. Right here. And so we're just keeping all the exercises so they make sense in the order, in the flow. Good. Set your hips down, grab your weights. And this one, if you like that pullover, tell me how you like this pullover okay. with your hips down. Cool. Because of the amount of mobility you yes. need. That's fine. Oh my gosh. That's good. Do you see that stretch? Yes. Oh my god. Oh! I like that a lot. Yeah. So good. Yeah, getting that stretch in the lats 
is always been really satisfying for me, whether it's like a wide rip pull up and you're coming all the way down, or if I can find a good pull up machine, which is so rare. Yeah. But I'm hitting it right here, it's all right. Oh, man. Ah! It's so beautiful. Okay. Then it's also hits the serratus. The serratus. Yeah. Tell me about the serratus. The serratus is a cool muscle in between your pec and your lat, and it makes that serrated looking, jagged look in between, kind of near your armpit. So when you see a picture of Arnold Schwarzenegger waving, he has that big serrated uh, musculature under his armpit. That's the serratus feeding through. It's just a cool looking muscle. <laughs> That's awesome. Yeah. I love it. I didn't even know the name of the serratus. Thank you for teaching me. That's My great. goal this year, good, set your weights down, set your weights down, but that was to learn all the names of the bones. Oh, wow. And then I was like, all right, there's 206 bones. I'll take, then we're just going to go back into our answers. Okay. And then this time, catch the ball. And then when you come up, you're going to yeah. rotate. Throw it from your back pocket to me. Gotcha. I guess good back to so get a little sauce on it. Solid, solid. Yeah, so talking about your single leg takeouts, your double leg takeouts, getting that rotation. Oh, man! Oh! You can circle these up on the wrestling mat, have each kid throwing the ball to each other. <laughs> this is, you know, and I think this is something you can put on a wrestling mat. Yeah. Unlike most weights. Yeah. Without damaging it, but, you know. I love it. One more. Oh! So, how long did you wrestle for? Seven, eight years. Yeah? Yeah, so starting 10 and finishing at 18. Oh, nice. It was great. Really great. Because, ugh, really got me out of my shell. Nice. Nothing like, you know. What weight class did you wrestle at? <laughs> Sophomore year of high school, 104 pounds, I think. 104? No! Yeah. Oh. yeah, and then junior year, I gained like 40 pounds. I forget exactly what the weight class exactly was, but, yeah. you know, I went up to like 140. And college is when I grew a lot. Oh, really? Yeah. Where did you go to school? Bethel? Uh, Bethany University. Bethany University. Yeah, Scotts Valley. What did you study at? Uh, English and music, double major. So, uh, 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 music with a vocal performance. Good. Analysis. All right, we're going to shift gears. We've hit the front of the body tremendously. Yeah. We're going to go to the back of the answer now. Okay. And we're just going to move into our one arm rows. And then just right here, chest up, back flat, butt out. Inhaling up, exhaling down, keeping that beautiful alignment. And I'm excited to see and get your feedback on the one arm rows here. And just the posture and everything. And talk to us about while we're doing one arm rows, things that we're looking for. So you'll see a couple different variations of a one arm row. This is the most popular, which is pretty neutral, coming out at about a three quarter angle. Another variation to hit the lats more is reaching for your back pocket, right? Like doing the Old West, reach for your revolver, reach for that pocket, it hits a lower lap, a little bit more. And if you come out to the side, it'll work your uh, rhomboids in the back of your shoulder, your upper back a little bit more. So it's a really versatile movement. Oh, wow. Yeah. I just learned so much about the one arm rows. I'm so grateful. Yeah! Pulling that back arm for the back pocket. Oh, man. Yeah. Coming out. Oh, good. We got one more. Good, and then very mindfully set your weight down, and then put both hands down at the front of your answer, stay where you're at for some monkey kicks. Oh, Bring exactly. that knee in towards the elbow, okay. exhale and extend. Straight back? Up, lifting, extend, yeah. Okay, so when you're lifting, you're engaging the lower back more. When you're extending, you're engaging the glute more. Mm -hmm. And I love the articulation of your spine, because what we were talking about, the spine moves in six directions, forward, backward, side to side. So right now, you can see right here with his lift, He's engaging the lower back here, honoring the third law of physics. And one of the things that I have seen often is people overtrain their abs and their quads. Would you say that's been an observation of yours? Yeah, absolutely correct. And the abs I've seen people overtrain because they believe six pack is sit up, sit up, sit up. Yeah. Sit up. <laughs> and so when you overtrain your abs, what happens is your lower back is vulnerable. And when you overtrain your quads, your hamstrings are underdeveloped. Good, then I can slide it over the other side, which also leads to back sensations. That makes sense. Please love it. Did I love your tattoo, Adam and I? Yeah. Ah! Ah! That's old school. So good. And I just want to point out the length through my man Calvin's spine. I want to point out how his core is engaged. I want to point out how his tricep is still engaged on that right arm. And I just want to point out the square body, square hips. So good. So incredible. So amazing. Oh, great breath. So when you're doing that, what are you thinking about? Right now, 
I'm thinking about the muscle hand, so I'm focusing all of my energy on my lower lat and my rhomboids, and I'm purposefully alienating the parts of my body I don't want to work on from my mental capacity, just not thinking about it. Focusing on what I'm trying to target. Good, done. <coughs> Beautiful. And so, can you just give us a tip real quick? Say that for you, Can you give all of our friends a tip real quick? When they're doing a specific exercise movement, what do you propose that they focus on? Um, depending on their goals, if they're trying to you know, really target a muscle group, they need to focus on A, breath, and B, squeezing. So you're trying to make the, the movement as difficult for yourself as you can, <laughs> which is counterintuitive. But you're focusing and squeezing, getting the most out of every rep. Uh, and you know, because as you said earlier, time is your most precious resource. So make every rep your best rep. One for the money. Good. Very mindfully, coming back to the front of the answer to get the heart rate back up. Cool. So we just did a couple minutes back there, hitting the posterior chain. Yeah. And now we're just going to move back into some answers with some bicep curls. Yeah. Please and thank you. Please and thank you. Thank you. So good, man. I'm so excited to continuously learn from you and just your knowledge bank. I like this, man. It's so good. And you can see now my man's starting to glisten a little oh, bit. He's got a little bit of sweat going. Yeah, this is gnarly. So what do you do for your cardio training currently? Not much, man. Pretty much nothing. Yeah. I, uh, you know, when I'm working on strength goals, I'll do a Stairmaster for 20 to 30 minutes twice a week. Uh -huh. That's it. Perfect. So what is it about the Stairmaster that you value for the cardiovascular experience? Uh, <laughs> well, it's good cardio, but it also helps me with white man's disease, which is uh, the lack of gluteus maximus. <laughs> so it kills two birds with one stone. Uh, it really helps me work on my glutes and gets my cardio going. Nice. I love it. So how does this feel on your glutes? Amazing. Really good. Nice. So when we were doing the kickbacks, I was definitely feeling it. So I've, I've uh, formulated this thought called answer ass that you begin to develop and answer ass. Answer ass and answer ass. Which those, everybody wants. <laughs> yeah, those are two of the side effects of using the answer on a regular basis with a moderate carb, high protein nutritional plan. Agreed. Good, very much. Leave your weights, stand all the way up for greatness. We're now going to get our way back to the back of our answer again. And uh, let me grab you just slightly lighter weights because based on what I've seen and hearing and learning, yeah. is uh, we're going to hit the posterior delts now. Oh, awesome. With the rear raise, and so the 20s might be more than we're able to squeeze and hold. That's what you have been doing. All right. So yeah, we'll start with the left knee in the center, left hand in the front. Okay. Grab the weight with the right hand, kick that leg out to the side. And then just talk to us about the posterior delt as you're doing this. So the posterior delt is a great muscle to your fullness from the side. So if you want to look as thick as a tree from the side, you need a round, bolder shoulder. There was a study done I showed that the average bodybuilder has an anterior delt, front of your delt, front of your shoulder, 70% larger than the average person. They have a medial delt, 35% larger than the average person. And they have a posterior delt, 10% larger than the average person of a corresponding body weight. Meaning, the posterior delt is the least targeted uh, of the three shoulder muscles for the average weight of three. So if you get that posterior delt built up, for movements like this, you get a big round shoulder and you look big from every angle. So one of the things I'm noticing also is you're changing the direction of the way that you're holding your hand right. like you did with the rows. Yeah. So for me personally, I'm not an expert at targeting the back of my shoulder. Yeah. So it takes a little bit of, uh, you know, finicking around yeah. before I really get that perfect angle where it's not just my back working like that. Yeah. Sure, very much. We set that weight down. We're gonna go back into that donkey kick posture, and instead of kicking it back, we're gonna do a fire hydrant, lifting it out to the side. Interesting. So, yeah. so okay. keep, you can keep your legs straight like that. Uh -huh. I was just gonna do 90 degree in the knee, 90 degree in the angle, okay. or in the ankle. And that's one of the cool Ooh. things about what you're showing me, what you're demonstrating to me, because just like you shifted the angle of your wrist and the angle of your row. Uh -huh. You're changing the engagement of the muscle. Interesting. So watching you do that with your legs straight, which I've never done, 
the engagement of the glute and the engagement of the lower back was totally unique. And so that's one of the benefits of the intellectual property of the answer. So you're a music major, right? Yeah. What do you think the most versatile musical instrument is? Probably piano, because you have so many notes right there at your disposal. You have to read both clefs. Uh, yeah, good. Slide it over to the other side. Then post your delt points on the other side. So I was hoping you would say the guitar. Oh, okay. Take your left leg out to the side. Yeah. And the reason I was hoping you would say the guitar is because I've been saying the answer is the guitar fitness. It kind of is though, right? You can take it anywhere. Yeah. I think it was Beethoven said that the guitar was a symphony in a box. Yeah. Oh shit! This is a total gym in a box. It is. But it is. I have to use something different than the total gym because somebody else already used that word. <laughs> Uh, and don't quote me, I don't know if that's picture, but yeah, so it's yeah, a yeah. concept. Yeah. So the thing that's cool about the guitar is you can play it in a rock band, you yeah. can play it in a country western band, you can play blues, you can play electric, you can play acoustic, you can play whatever you want to play, you can cover somebody else's song, you can create your own unique song, and so the answer provides all of those opportunities. That's very true. Good, very much. You keep that leg up to the side, and then grab the weight with the left hand, move it into the posterior elbows here. Oh, I love it. It's so good. So the muscles that we've yet to really focus on are the hamstrings. Yeah. So the last round, going through our answer workout, we'll hit some hamstrings, and then I would just like your real, true, genuine, authentic feedback on the answer as a personal trainer as a bodybuilder, as a person who has played athletics. Oh yeah. Good, five more there. Oh, it's so good. Three, two, one. Three, two, good. And then we're gonna come back to the front of our answer for our final set of answers. And what we're gonna do is an answer into a straight leg deadlift, okay. into a Arnold press, all the way back down. Arnold press this guy? Yeah. Beauty. Oh yeah! My man is so nominal! Oh yeah! <laughs> all right, so. Yeah. Straight leg deadlift. Oh yeah. Okay. So we're doing some complex movements here. Yeah, this, is, this is where we're getting. Like, woo -hoo -hoo. Yeah. The brain is so powerful. Inhale down, make that sit up. Exhale left, right from the heels, the hips, plus boost, floor, straight leg deadlift, shut down our core, second day when we're spine. Extend your hips back, engage your hamstrings, lengthen, come up, create strength, Arnold Girl. Oh yeah, I'm press! And then repeat. We got nine more of those. Inhale down, create length. Exhale up, down through the heels, engage the boss, and lift the core of the cardio, feel the heart going, feel the blood flow. Stretch it out the hamstrings, engage the glutes, and he stands up. Look at that, my man was telling me yesterday, push my hips forward. Yeah. That's what he's doing right here, right now. I love it. I love it. My man is meticulous. movement, we're doing our cardio training, we're doing yeah. our strength training, we're doing our core training. I would like to see one other apparatus or machine that allows you to do your strength, your core, your cardio all at once. Okay. Oh my goodness. Oh, it's so beautiful. This isn't the answer. You're the answer, my man. Look at this! Look at this! I'm just going to stand here and then watch this. You can see him like come up around me. There he is. Boom! He's my shadow. And then watch this. I'm gonna sneak in behind him. Yeah. And it's gonna be like, now you see me, now you don't. <laughs> oh yeah, now you see me, now you don't. <laughs> <laughs> Exterior 
Right. We're doing some right arm tricep kickbacks. Ooh. Yep. Oh, look at that! That looks like my quadriceps. <laughs> Shine out high forward, bring length through the spine. Suck the navel into the spine. Oh, yeah. Oh, and then I'm noticing these shifting angles again on yeah. the kickbacks. Is that the same reason for same the rows? Takes me a few reps to really get the right angle. Oh, nice. I love it. Three, two more, one more. Good. Another side. Oh, that's good. <laughs> nice. And so would you select a little bit lighter weight to do these, perhaps? I would, just yeah. because for me personally, I have a hard time with these with proper form. A lot of times I have to swing a little bit. Yeah. Uh, but, you know, there's a lot of people out there that could use this weight. Yeah. Um, I just err on the side of lighter for these in particular. Yeah, perfect. I love it. I love the tip. I love the value. We did 13 on our right arm, so we'll just do 13 on our left arm to promote balance, to promote synergy, to promote stabilization. So good. Three more, champion. Three, two, good. Set your weight down, stay where you're at. For go back into the donkey kick position, extend your left leg long and strong behind you, or your right leg. Okay. Extend your right leg strong behind you. Okay. So one straight line, shoulder, hip, knee, ankle. And then square your hips up. Yep. And extend it all the way back, and then pause there. And then inhale your needle towards your glute. So keeping your leg up. We're going to do a different movement. In, oh, okay. Inhale your heel towards your glute. Oh, got it. Engaging the hamstring and then exhale and engage the glute and the quad. Inhale it in, exhale it out. And then you were telling me something yesterday too about the hamstring strengthening just through stretching. Can you talk a little bit more about that? Yeah, so a couple studies have shown an odd uh, thing about the hamstring muscle. And that is that it strengthens a lot more than other muscles in the body simply through the stretch reflex. Now, this is one study I read, um, but I found it very interesting because it is true that a lot of times you'll do a movement like a straight leg deadlift where that hamstring is supporting, but it's not necessarily contracting, and man, does it get your, your uh, hamstring sore. So, as a stabilizer with a little bit of stretching involved, that hamstring grows like crazy. So, yeah, it's really interesting. Yeah, I, I found that really fascinating. That was one of the big nuggets you gave me yesterday. I'm so grateful for it. Inhale, exhale it out, inhale in. Good, very much. We slide it over to the other side. We did 15 on that leg, we did 15 on this leg. And then we're going to get your pure review. Inhale the heel in, engage the hamstring. Exhale the foot out, engage the quad. Inhale it in, fire the hamstring. Exhale it out, fire the quad. I love the flexion on the toe. I love the length through your spine. Suck in the core into the spine to engage the ass. I love the head and neck in a neutral position. Picking the knee up just a little bit higher to engage the lat, oh, okay. the lower back, just a little bit more. Oh, it's so beautiful! Wow, right. Dude, I can see the definition of your hamstring through your shorts. I love <laughs> it. Cool. Good. Keeping that leg high gets the glutes engaged as well as the lower back. Oh, right. Flexing the quad on the way down, you can multitask engaging your quads as well as your hamstring here. Similar to a leg extension and a hamstring curl. And after what you told me yesterday about lengthening and stretching the hamstring, this exercise has so much more value than I already thought it did. Last one, best one. Oh, yeah! The answer has arrived. Boom! All right, man. So if you would just put your different hats on. Let's start out with your first hat. You're a personal trainer. Yeah. What do you think about the product, using it with your clients? Well, it's so good that I'm in danger of putting me out of job because it's amazing. Uh, no, but uh, the thing about it is that you can see how out of breath I am. My muscles are also very sore, but we accomplish all of that with proper form. So a lot of the uh, exercise programs you see, uh, you know, certain uh, blank fit programs. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, they encourage group exercises where people get competitive, they're working hard, they're working fast, but they're injuring themselves. This is a built-in way to not injure yourself. It pretty much forces you to use proper form, which is amazing. Uh, I honestly don't see a way it can be beat uh, for the, the footprint it has. You know, it takes up, uh, what, four square feet, three square feet? Yeah, if you're, for you, six foot three, your wingspan 
and your height yeah. for the donkey kids. Yeah, so I mean, it's really incredible that something that small, that light, has that much uh, advantageous uses in your home, or in your gym, or in your you know sports program at a school or something. Uh, if I were to coach like a wrestling team or something, I would definitely want one of these. Uh, martial arts studios could really use it because a lot of them are implementing strength training. Uh, you know, it's not just the elevation that has me so out of breath right now. That's a really good workout. Uh, so I'm really, I'm blown away. Awesome. All right, now let's put your athlete hat on, your martial okay. arts and your wrestling. Yeah, so as a former martial artist, former wrestler, and a current uh, competitive bodybuilder, you know, it fills the blank space in a wrestling and martial arts in that you need something that you can uh, incorporate into a mat scenario a scenario where you have you know uh, you can't bring a bunch of weights uh, if you have a team working out together everybody knows that if you have more than three people in a weight room working on the same program you're gonna be sitting around on your phone waiting for the guy to finish with the, the set if you have a couple of these, that takes that whole thing out of the equation. You have more high intensity, there's no waiting for the machine to open up. Boom, 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 boom. You put them away, you go on with your day. Um, as a power lifter and a bodybuilder, this brings in a lot of the cardio. You know, most bodybuilders don't wanna go for a jog. We don't wanna, you know, stand on a treadmill for endless hours. You wanna feel like you're doing something to get some hypertrophy, some blood flow, um, and some active recovery to the muscles, even when you're doing cardio. And I think this is an amazing way to do that. Uh, I'm certainly, you know, the cardio is the most gnarly aspect for me just now. And uh, yeah, so I think as an athlete, it fills that void of, okay, I have a recovery day, so I'm not gonna be deadlifting 600 or whatever, that, you know, you might be deadlifting, but you don't wanna sit around and you don't wanna walk on a treadmill. Get an answer, do the movements. Uh, Dr. Steffi Cohen is really uh, someone that I have been noticing does a lot of active recovery where she will use movements similar to this. She'll get sweating and she's the biggest name in powerlifting right now. Um, not saying she uses this, but a lot of the movements and stuff that she does on her recovery days are something that I can see myself doing on this on a recovery day. So it's really great. That's awesome. All right. Yeah. Now put your business hat on. You've worked with Apple, Google, yeah. Yeah. Facebook. And you've been in all kinds of yeah. gyms. What do you think about? Okay, so um, you're working at any company, you know, Cisco, Google, Apple, um, you name the company. Nobody wants to work out in the weight room with their coworkers because let's be honest, half of the movements you've seen people do, but you don't really know if you're doing it properly. And thus you want to get a personal trainer, but you might be nervous to do that. You might not have the time. One of the best things about the answer that I've noticed is that it forces you to hit stuff with the correct form. Uh, there's no guessing. There's no, you know, nerve saying, okay, am I looking stupid? Am I doing this silly? It takes all the guesswork out because with your squats, your sit-ups, a lot of your core work, a lot of your lower body work, it's helping you hit everything perfectly. Uh, so either you can get it at home or you can have it at your uh, gym, whether it be at Google, Apple, Cisco, whatever, and uh, you can use it without fear of looking silly. Because even though nobody's probably looking at us in the gym judging us, we all feel like someone is. And this helps us to kind of have that confidence that we're doing it properly. Right yeah. on, man. So. I'm so grateful for your time. Time is your most valuable asset, and the fact that you just shared an hour with me is huge flattery, and I'm grateful for it. Do you have anything else you'd like to share with our friends? Yeah, guys. Uh, if you want to get good cardio and move to Colorado. <laughs> yeah, right on. So if you want to come in and uh, you live here locally, come check my man Calvin out, get a complimentary session, and work out with him, and he can pour his knowledge and love and wisdom into you the way he has it to me. And one of the things that I really like to do with all my videos mm -hmm. is end them in a certain way. Okay. So if I say pink panda bear, uh -huh. what kind of animal are you thinking about? Pink panda bear. All right, perfect. So if I say I love you, uh -huh. love yourself, yeah. love each other, yes. love everyone. Love everyone. Ah!